Holy oh, my god. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Oh All systems currently green. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. T minus 15, stand by for terminal count. All right, guys. Final. Nine. Ten. Nine. Nine. Six. Do you see them both light up? Inside, shut down. Inside boosters. Elon, spectacular. What did you learn? What did Falcon Heavy teach you? Uh, teaches, I guess, told me like crazy things can come true. Um, like, because I, uh, he said, like, I didn't really think this would work. Um, because like, when I see the rocket lift off, I see like a thousand things that that could not work, and it's amazing when they do. Um, And I was really, the, the, seeing the two boosters land synchronized, really just like the simulation. Um, I mean, it makes me think, like, you, there really could be quite a scalable approach. You know, you could imagine large numbers of those just coming in, landing, taking off, landing, doing many flights per day. Um, so it, I think it gives me a lot of faith for our next architecture. The, the sort of the interplanetary uh, spaceship. Um, can have different names for it, but BFR is kind of the code name. And I, it gives me confidence that BFR um, is really quite workable. Um, but I was actually looking at the side boosters and like, they're pretty big, you know, they're 16 stories tall, uh, 60 foot leg span. Um, but you really, we need to be way bigger than that. Um, so, so I think uh, it's given me a lot of confidence that we can make the uh, BFR design work. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I have a tremendous confidence, obviously, in the SpaceX team. So, I think I think we can really do this a lot, you know, and and, and keep advancing the. the Keep advancing the technology to achieve um, full and rapid reusability, uh, which have, would have a profound effect on the future. And one of the interesting things about, say, Falcon Heavy versus Falcon 9 is that Falcon Heavy has the same level of expendability as Falcon 9. So if you look at, say, the, the, the price of Falcon 9 is $60 million, Falcon Heavy is 90, even though it's got three times as much capability. Because in both cases, the only thing that's expended is the upper stage. We're going to start recovering the, the, the fairings, the big nose cone. We're going to recover that, recover the boosters. And so there's really, the cost difference really between a Falcon 9 and a Falcon Heavy is minor. Well, the next question from Marsha Dunn at Associated Press. Um, Marsha Dunn, AP. What were your, what was going through your mind? How, how amazed were you to see your roadster up there with Starman uh, just cruising along with the Blue Planet? And how long will we be getting live views, do you think, from the car? Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Um, 
And you know, the, the, the colors all look, look kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You, don't, you know, like everything looks too crisp. Um, and, um, but we you know we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever, you know? So it just has the same seats that like a normal car has. It's just literally a normal car in space, which I kind of like the absurdity of that. Um, and if you look closely, there's a, on the dashboard, there's a tiny roadster with a tiny spaceman. <laughs> so, because Hot Wheels made a Hot Wheels roadster, and a, and a friend of mine uh, um, suggested, hey, why don't you put that Hot Wheels roadster with a tiny spaceman on the, you know, in the car too? I'm like, that'd be cool. Sure. <laughs> so we did that. Um, I mean, it's kind of silly and fun, but I, I think. I think that's, you know, silly fun things are important. Um, and <laughs> normally for a new rocket, you know, they'd launch like a block of concrete or something like that. I mean, that's so boring. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's just the imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. Um, and it's, it's still tripping me out. I mean, I'm tripping balls here. <laughs> uh, Nick, next question in the room. How about Brendan Byrne from WMFE, uh, the NPR affiliate in Orlando? Yeah, congratulations, Elon. Great launch today. Um, where do you see the Falcon Heavy fitting into this launch industry? Is this something that is going to be for more national security? You see this for interplanetary missions. What's the future of Falcon Heavy? Yeah, the great thing is, like, so Falcon Heavy uh, opens up a new class of payload. Um, so it, it can launch uh, more than twice as much payload as any other rocket in the world. So it's kind of up to customers what they might want to launch. But it can launch things direct to Pluto and beyond. Um, you know, no, no stop needed. Um, you don't even need like a gravity assist or anything. And uh, it can launch giant satellites. Um, it can do anything you want. Um, you could go back. To, you could send people back to the moon with a bunch of you know if you did a bunch of launches of Falcon Heavy and did an orbital ref refilling. Um, the two, two or three Falcon Heavies, you, you know, would equal the payload of a Saturn V. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because I think the new architecture, BFR architecture, is the way to go. Um, but I, I think it's it's going to open up a sense of possibility. I think it's going to encourage um, other companies and countries to say, hey, if SpaceX, which is a commercial company, can do this. And no, nobody paid for Falcon Heavy. It was paid for in, with internal funds. Um, then, uh, then they they could do it too. So I think it's going to encourage other countries and companies to raise their sights and say, "Hey, we can do bigger and better," which is great. We, we want a new space race. Space races are exciting. <laughs> <laughs> How about one more in the room? How about Daryl Neal from the Fox affiliate here in Orlando? Mr. Musk, kind of talk us through your, your thought process as you were watching the launch. You, you said you were incredibly concerned about it. Just, you know, you just wanted well, to clear the I mean, pad because it kind of I, I set drove, expectations low. So t talk me through as you were watching it. Yeah, I think this is true of anyone who's involved in, you know, close in the design of something. You just, you, you know all the ways they can fail. Um, and, um, and that's like the sort of mental checklist that's scrolling through your mind is all the things that can 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 break. I mean, there's thousands of things that can go wrong, and everything has to go right once li once the rocket lifts off. There's no there's no opportunity to do a recall, or upload a software fix, or anything like that. It's like it's either passing grades 100 percent, um, at least for the ascent phase. Um, and I've seen rockets blow up so many different ways. So you know, it's a uh, Big relief when it it actually works. Uh, one more question in the room. And then I, I bet the first, you know, when they first, oh, sorry, whoever does like whoever's like, you know, when they're like first launched like a 747 or or DC3 or something like that. I bet the chief engineer was like, I can't believe that thing's flying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,
easy to both side boosters on touchdown. Lane out there is moving on to 11 by 1 hole. Recovery one, we're going to Anthony Pettis. Coming up very shortly, we will be attempting its landing on the autonomous spaceport drum ship. Check on your screen. Sometimes this footage goes out when it approaches the drone ship and the heavy vibrations make it lose signal. We're crossing our fingers, that's not the case right now. Stage two, nominal parking orbit insertion. Uh, so it looks like that landing is happening at the moment. We have lost signal. 